Hey everyone, welcome to this video. So this is going to be on the Kali system, which has a very interesting history. So um, this is also known as the, as the Kali Koltanowski system, um, named after Edgar Kali and George Koltanowski, who both used this system uh, in their lifetimes like a lot. And they really showed a lot of ideas uh, behind it. Um, and so uh, this opening is very interesting um, because it really isn't an, an attempt to get an advantage. Everyone understands that but it's just trying to get a game without a lot of theory. Um, the problem is that if you're trying to game, get a game without a lot of theory, this uh, structure is very simple for Black to also understand, and so there are not a lot of complications that could occur uh, if Black plays like very simply and very principled chess. Um, and it was also used actually by Magnus Carlsen against Karyakin in one of their games um, in their World Championship match in 2016, and also played more recently by Ding Loren against Jan Nepomneshi in Game 12 of their uh, 2023 World Championship match. Um, and Ding managed to win that game, but I can tell you for a fact that it was not due to the opening. And that's, yeah, um, basically what I can say about that. Um, and it's basically the, uh, yeah, the main, the starting position of the Kali system is after we play the move d4, or we can play knight f3 first, it doesn't matter a lot. Um, but after d5, knight f3, knight f6, and e3. So now we can say we can see that this bishop is not out on f4 like in the London system, and you could claim that this bishop is bad, and so it's uh, maybe this is a worse version of a London system. However, um, you may say also that uh, this bishop has potential on this long diagonal, uh, and so we'll see a couple of model games in the Kali system um, with this bishop landing on b2. Um, and so from this position, the main move is to play c5, immediately challenging white's center. And white has three options here. White can play the move... Uh, okay, white also has the move c4, but that doesn't really enter the Kali system. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of a different game from there, uh, more resembling the semi Tarash. Um, but knight bd2 here is one of the moves, which was chosen by Ding Loren. And black has two main options. Um, I'm not going to be looking at, at a lot of games in after knight bd2, but the point is that um, behind this move knight bd2 is, um, okay, if they play c64, then white can recapture back on d4, and after knight c6, white has two options here. And so white can play the move bishop d3, um, with the idea that you're preventing bishop f5, um, and after bishop g4, bring the, bring the bishop out of the pawn chain, so they want to play e6. We can play c3, e6, and white can try to apply some pressure with threatening the move knight e5, uh, but after bishop d6, um, knight e5, let's say, queen c7, uh, white can try to win the bishop here, and then uh, kick the knight back, and not allowing the pawn to be taken, uh, knight f6, knight f3, and perhaps in this position, white can say that I have the two bishops and I have a slight advantage. Um, so that's maybe a reasonable uh, something to be uh, argued for. However, in this position, uh, knight d7 is also possible, which is quite annoying because it prevents knight e5 uh, with a lot of force, or with a lot of bite to it. So that's the possibility, that's the first possibility in this knight d2 setup. Um, we could also play c3. Now with the idea that if black develops the bishop out to f5, now we can play the bishop to b5 in one move. So if you play bishop d3, it doesn't make sense to bring the bishop out to move the bishop again to b5. And so now with bishop b5, we're pinning the knight and perhaps you want to play this move knight e5. Now black can simply ignore it with playing e6, uh, but this allows knight e5, which may be a bit annoying with possibly some g4 ideas also as well as pressure on this knight, you know, maybe queen a4 coming. Um, but instead, they can also play this move queen b6. Now, it's possible here for white to take on c6, giving up the bishop pair. But now, b takes c6 is, is almost forced, because maybe queen takes c6 runs into knight e5, and possibly some queen a4 business. Um, maybe black is still fine after queen a6, but it's, yeah, this is a, also one of the possibilities. But after bc6, knight e5, um, if black plays the move e6, then perhaps g4 can be a bit annoying. Position is still equal, but maybe this is quite an aggressive system to go for. Um, knight d7 is kind of more, um, is kind of better, um, because if we now we, we can trade on d7, and black simply has the bishop here, and uh, no problems after, let's say, castles and bishop f5. So this is a possibility. Uh, additionally, uh, queen c7 can be played here, I think, which was played in the uh, in the game in game 12. And white can play bishop d3, um, and the simple move is just to play bishop g4 and e6 and bishop d6 with a completely equal position. Uh, but in the game, um, bishop d7 was played, um, which 
is not really the best move. Uh, White had an opportunity very early on to get a slight advantage, but um, Ding missed his way. Um, so that's this early c takes d4. They could also play knight c6 here, but the difference is that maybe this allows the move d takes c5. Now after e6, trying to win back the pawn, uh, White can play this move a3. Now the point being that you want to play b4 in case of bishop takes c5, and now I think White gets a really good game here after bishop d6 and bishop b2 with uh, c4 coming next, maybe rook c1. And this just looks like a like a really good um, like reverse queen's gambit declined uh, because you see normally in the queen's gambit uh, queen's gambit accepted sorry um, because normally you see like um, black having this expansion with a6 b5 in the queen's gambit accepted and in this position white just has an extra tempo in, uh, compared to those kinds of positions and has this uh, nice queenside space uh, so not allowing a5 uh, not allowing b4 is best by playing a5. And now simply white should play bishop b5, pinning the knight now that this a5 move has weakened the b5 square. After bishop takes c5, we can just castle and play b3. And this position is completely equal, I think. Like, there's really nothing that white can say to uh, argue for an advantage uh, besides maybe this weakened b5 square. But really, that shouldn't be enough to claim an advantage. Uh, and this was played before by uh, Karyakin against So. Um, but yeah, this really isn't... Uh, like the best try for an advantage. Um, I mean, the Kali is, is, isn't in general, but yeah. The next system I want to look at is uh, the pure Kali, uh, Koltanowski uh, system with this move C3. Now, this is a variation where I think it's, you can argue that this is a worse version of the London system because you basically get the same structure, but with the bishop not out on F4. And the main idea behind this setup is to try to go for this E4 advance with castles, a rookie one, queen e2, and maybe e4. Um, but that's only like one plan that you can go for. It's really one dimensional in my opinion. And so that's not really my uh, my favorite way of developing. Um, I think b3 here is um, the most um, interesting way to play. Um, now, before going into the main uh, downside of this uh, of the system, I want to look at knight c6, which we'll look at a, a lot of games uh, in this in the structure. Uh, we'll just play bishop b2. And again, now it's possible for black to take on d4, but we'll look at that later. Uh, the main point is after e6, uh, white wants to play this move bishop d3, castles, knight e5, and go for f4. And we can see that this attack becomes like really, really powerful if we manage this setup, this kind of stonewall setup. However, if we play bishop d3 now, this may be a bit annoying to deal with knight b4. And so uh, we don't really want to run into that. And so we play this very nice move a3, prophylaxis against knight b4. And so now after uh, bishop d6, now we can play bishop d3. And we want to, you know, castle, play knight e5 and f4. So that's the idea. Now, um, the problem is that in this position after, uh, after b3, white can, black can immediately, immediately take on d4. And this is the main problem. Now, if we take on d4 with the knight trying to keep the bishop's eye open on this long diagonal, then e5 gains a lot of space and this is quite, an, uh, quite annoying. But again, it's still a playable position. Uh, and if we play e takes d4, now after knight c6, bishop b2, you can see that the bishop is really doing nothing on b2 uh, behind his own pawn. Um, and after, let's say, bishop g4, activating the bishop before they close the center with e6, um, knight bd2 and e6, it's not really clear what the bishop on is on b2. Uh, perhaps white can still go for this bishop d3 castles and may, trying to go for knight e5, but then again, you have to move the queen to maybe e1. So it's not really the most pleasant position to have. The ideas are very different there. Um, and so that's the main move, c takes d4, which is very annoying. Um, but we can also see what happens if black delays c takes d4. Now, if they play knight c6 first and only then play c takes d4, now this becomes interesting because we can play the move knight takes d4. Um, but again, the position is still equal, um, but we can just see after, for example, if they play a move like queen c7, we can take on c6 here, bc6 and c4. Um, and after e5, let's say trying to get the center, knight c3, Attack in the center, bishop b4, we can uh, win the bishop pair here. Um, and we do win the bishop pair, but um, while black has this very nice center. And after castles, we can take on d5, play rook c1. Uh, very interesting position, but not a try for an advantage. Once again, I, re oh, I reiterate. So that's a possibility after queen c7. Instead of they play e6, now we can actually make a claim that this bishop is just bad on c8. So that's one thing to, to play for. Um, it's possible. It's possible to play bishop e2, 
uh, but uh, yeah, in two games before, this has been tried, bishop b4, forcing c3, and then coming back with the bishop to d6. After castles, castles, and c4, white can claim, you know, white can try to uh, maintain the tension in the center. So that's a possibility. Additionally, it's also possible to take on c6 and only then play, uh, go for the c4 idea. And now this was played twice by Nakamura against uh, both MVL and Abdu Saturov. He won those games because he's a magician, but... Um, like, he, yeah, this is a completely equal position, but uh, clearly the bishop on b2 is quite nice, but not an event, not enough for an advantage. So, yeah, those are that's the b3 system, um, and the c3 and the knight bd2 systems. So, now we're just gonna look at uh, the some of the model games. Um, but in the first four uh, thematic games I want to show, uh, this doesn't really have a theme. Um, so yeah, just ignore if you saw that, um, yeah, if you saw the position, um. And yeah, this was played by Edgar Colley against Ernst Grunfeld. So two pioneers of the opening, um, d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, e3. And so we get our Colley system. And now black plays this move b6, uh, going for a Queen's Indian setup. Bishop d3, uh, all according to plan. Bishop b7, knight bd2. And black, white is trying to keep flexible with the pawns. Maybe they don't even want to play b3, maybe. They just want to play c4. Um, but b3 looks like it makes a lot of sense because you have this problem of... Uh, an, a very passive bishop on c1 and so c5 castles bishop e7 and only now b3 uh, white tries to develop the bishop on the long diagonal and i think black makes a very good decision here to take on d4 uh, the point being that e takes d4 is virtually forced if you don't want to give black the entire center um and in this position d5 is definitely the most principled and the best move um but you are blocking in your own bishop um but i think that the extra space is um you know to contest white um, is much more important because um, black in this game decided to play d6 trying to go for a hedgehog setup and so this is a typical hedgehog setup where you play the queen to c7 um, yeah you you put all the pawns on the sixth rank uh, rook c8 maybe you can try to go for this battery on the long diagonal with queen b8 and queen e8 a very typical hedgehog setup however in this position um, white already has a has an advantage after knight b, uh, bishop b2 knight bd7 c4 uh, white just gets very nice space in the center castles and in this position rook c1 was played uh, which is a good move but i can also recommend uh, playing a flexible queen e2 which you always want the queen on e2 in the collie system um and so rook c1 rook e8 rook e1 queen c7 and now queen e2 so after uh, black tries to complete their hedgehog setup with rook ac8 um white is faced with the decision what should i do right and so they see that this knight is not very good and so um, Kali uh, plays knight, D knight f1, trying to reroute the knight to g3. Um, and after queen b8, knight g3, queen e8. So this is a typical hedgehog uh, idea, trying to align the bishop on this long diagonal and creating a battery. Um, and in this position, knight g5 was played. It's a very nice move, actually. Now, the thing is that if black didn't miss the idea and they played something like bishop f8, um, I think white still has a nice position here, but it's not a, it's not a lights out moment. Um, and in this position, g6 was played, which is a very bad move, um, because it allows this very nice sacrifice, knight takes f7, now that the e6 pawn is, uh, under pressure, and after king takes f7, queen takes e6, king g7 was played, and now this is a really bad, um, that's a really bad move, actually, um, best here is just to play king f8, um, and now white has a typical idea of playing d5, and now opening up the bishop on this long diagonal, a very beautiful bishop, clearly. And after uh, the best move, knight e5, um, yeah, after knight e5, bishop c2 is best. And after rook cd8, threatening some bishop c8, uh, white can retreat with the queen to h3. And the black king is just eternally exposed with white having these two monster bishops. Let's say, for example, queen c8, there's already this nice move, knight f5. So that's kind of what could happen after king f8. But instead, king g7 was chosen, and this is this really led to a very nice game after d5, um, opening of the bishop on this long diagonal, and also shutting down this enemy bishop. So very nice multi-purpose move. Knight c5 was chosen, and now white plays this like, beautiful move, knight f5. And now uh, the point is after gf5, queen takes f5, and knight takes d3, white has this beautiful shot, rook takes e7, undermining the defender of this uh, f6 knight. So here, here, this would be just be winning easily. Um, and so instead of that, king f8 was chosen, but still this is really bad. Queen e3 was played, threatening to infiltrate the position. Um, g takes f5, 
queen h6, king f7, and now bishop takes f5. And there's already the immediate uh, possibility of rook takes e7, actually. Yeah, so thematic. Um, instead, bishop takes d5 was chosen, but now we have this, yeah, now Kali actually had this rook takes e7 move. Rook e7, queen takes f6, king e8, and after queen h8, the rook is simply dropping, um, and black has no compensation for the lost material, and they're just getting mated very soon. So uh, that's a very nice game um, by Kali. Um, yeah, after bishop takes c8, uh, his opponent just resigned. Um, so very nice game. Let's look at the second one. And so this was again played by Kali. Uh, d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, e3, d5. Now we see our first uh, very uh, standard position in the, uh, in the Kali system. Bishop d3, c5, and now c3. So this is the first game that we're going to look at the c3 complex. Um, after knight c6, knight bd2, bishop e7, castles uh c4 was played here which isn't a really good uh, which yeah isn't a really a good move but c takes d4 is reasonable i think cast uh, c takes but now you can argue that the bishop's eye has been opened so that's not really um maybe desirable maybe castles here is very reasonable um and yeah white has a typical uh idea of playing d takes c5 and then going for e4 next um yeah but you can claim that basically if uh, white, if black decides to take on e4 on here, then the resulting, like for example, queen exchange would give white some nice pressure on this diagonal. So this is maybe what white is hoping for. Um, and so instead, c4 was played uh, after bishop c2. Uh, now white actually introduces two breaks in the position. White has both this b3 break and this e4 break. And so white has like two targets to go for here, which is why c4 is really not a good move by black. Um, b5 just uh, preparing to meet this uh, b3 advance um, by defending this pawn. Uh, but now e4. And so if you play the move castles here, then after rook e1, still white has uh, quite a nice position, possibly threatening e5 next just to get some beautiful bishops on these diagonals. Um, instead, d takes e4 was played. After knight takes e4, castles, queen e2. Now the point is that if you take on e4, then after queen takes e4, there's a double threat on h7 and c6. Um, very elementary, um, but if they play bishop b7, which was played, knight fg5 is a very nice move. Um, now, the point again is that if you take on here, then perhaps queen takes e4 is quite annoying with pressure on here, and there are two threats, like both, like with the knight and the bishop uh, eyeing that. Um, and so, yeah, that's the idea. Um, and if you ignore the threat, I mean, if you ignore this, like, this knight g5 move, then after a6, we can simply take on f6 and take on h7. Um, again, another common tactic. Instead, h6 was played, which actually uh, we actually allowed this knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, and the queen e4, which I think was missed by black. Um, now, the knight, the knight cannot be taken because the bishop also has a battery on this h7 square. g6, and now knight takes e6. Very nice. Um, the thing is that if you play very slow, then after bishop g7, black just simply consolidates and gets two nice bishops on the uh, diagonal. Instead, knight takes e6 is a very nice move. f e6 and queen takes g6. Now, after bishop takes bishop g7, queen h7, uh, this attack was conducted beautifully. King f7, bishop g6 check, uh, forcing the king out, uh, forcing the king to f6 because it wants to keep defending this bishop. Uh, king f6, and now bishop h5. A very nice move. So this is all best moves by the computer, threatening queen g6. Um, and after knight d7, knight e7, bishop takes h6. Now now threatening this bishop. Uh, after rook g8, h4, another, another another nice move, threatening bishop g5, checkmate. Um, black blunders here with bishop takes h6 because queen f7 is min 1. So very nice game again by Kali. Um, the next one is... Edgar Colley against Victor Berger, um, and again we see this this guy's name all the time, uh, the pioneer of this opening. D4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, e3, e6, bishop d3, bishop e7, knight bd2, castles, castles, knight bd7, and so here we see like one way in which black just does not play c5 um, very yeah very early on, and um, in this position e4 was played which is not my favorite move because it really just liquidates center and um, after d takes e4, knight takes e4, takes takes, knight f6, bishop d3, c5. I think black objectively has no problems here um, and uh, d takes c5 was played, just not allowing um, for white to get an isolated pawn on d4, um, bishop takes c5 and now bishop g5, uh, pitting the knight. 
um, bishop e7, queen e2, queen c7, and so play has been very logical, um, but very balanced so far. Rook a d1, rook d8, knight e5. And now this starts to get interesting. Um, so after knight e5, bishop d7 was played, and now this beautiful move, bishop takes h7. Uh, after king takes h7, we can see that the point uh, is that this rook actually has left the defense of f7. And so this was a very common theme that we saw in the previous game, as well as in this game now, that after knight e5, bishop d7, bishop takes h7 is really nice, saying that if you take on e7 with the knight, then the bishop on e7 hangs. And if you take on h7 with the king, now white can take on f6, and now with the queen coming into h5 and f7 dropping. So it takes queen h5, king g8, queen f7, king h7, and rook d3. And black simply resigned, because <laughs> there's no defense against rook h3, and it's beautiful. So very nice game, um, but really led by his opponent's blunder. Uh, the next game is uh, Kali against Bogoyubov, who is a very strong player, obviously. Um, d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, e3, and c6. So now we see the first kind of interesting Slav setup. Uh, here, white can play c4 and just enter a Slav position. Um, very common. But instead, knight bd2 is just true to the Kali system. Uh, bishop f5. And now bishop d3. So this is another thematic idea. White allows the doubling of pawns on the def on the defile so that they can control a lot of squares. Um, and so it's not, yeah, you like this double pawns are not really a weakness, I would say. Um, after e6, castles, bishop e7, rook e1. The thing is that white needs to be careful about ever playing the move e4. Um, because if you ever push e4, then the double pawns like become a permanent weakness. Um, and the point is that if we ever push e4, black should not take and undouble our pawns. Black will just leave them there. Um, and without the bishop on d3, you know, exerting pressure on this diagonal, then if we ever push e5, our the strengths of our typically good French position are kind of diminished. So castles, e4, knight a6, and now white plays e5. So quite a risky way to play, honestly. Um, knight e7, knight f1, now c5, which I'm not a big fan of. But then again, like, what is black to do? That's a real question. Um, perhaps rook e8, bishop f8, g6, bishop g7 is a reasonable plan. You know, just trying to develop uh, rook c8 also makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, any of these moves. But c5 just allows the undoubling of pawns, knight takes c5, and a3. Um, so if you play d4, then this really gives a nice, a nice square on e4. Not exactly what we want. And so a3 was played here trying to perhaps expand here with b4 and maybe bishop b2. Um, queen d7, b4. And now the idea behind queen d7 is to allow this move knight e4, uh, threatening to infiltrate to c3. And so knight d4 was played, um, freeing possibly this f-pawn's path, um, and also, uh, yeah, allowing this queen possibly to jump to g4. Um, rook of c8, knight g3, knight c7, queen g4 now, uh, threatening possibly bishop h6. Uh, and so g6 and bishop g5. Now white tries to exchange the defender of um, the dark squares. Uh, and so here I think wise would be just simply bishop f8. But still after h4 uh, going for something like this would be quite pleasant for white. Um, instead knight e8 was played which allows the exchange of bishops. And after h4 a5 was played and then h5 not even caring about the pawn. Like white understands that this is not about the pawn on the queen side. This is about an attack. And a b4 was played, now h6, g6, h6, a b4, and black was pawn grabbing here. Um, but the problem is that after rook a b1, knight b2, so very shaky play, honestly, by black. Um, rook e3, preparing to, um, yeah, possibly go to eight, go to the h file or go to the f file to put pressure on f7. Um, knight g7, queen h4 now. Um, after queen d2, knight f3, attacking the queen, and also preparing knight g5. And after rook c1, trying to trade off some pieces, uh, rook e1 is played, and this is already really, really bad for black, um, because after queen c8, knight g5 is just deadly. Uh, queen c3, um, queen h7, king f8, and now rook e3. And so there really is no defense against rook f3, and this f7 pawn being so weak. Uh, rook a1 is played, king h2, queen d4, um, but there is no threat, and after rook f3, black just resigns, um, because f7 is dropping, uh, and this is deadly. So... Yeah, that's a very nice game by Kali. And so the next couple of games, we're going to be looking at the uh, the B3 complex because that's my favorite complex to go for. Um, 
And yeah, I'm not gonna look at the C3 complex actually, um, because um, it's really something that I can't recommend with a with a good conscience. Um, and but you can also see like the games in the study that I will link down below in the description if you do decide to play the C3 um, the C3 systems. Okay, so uh, we're going to be looking at the B3 complex now, and I just have three model games to show you. First played by Artur Yusupov against Peter Shurin. Apologies for butchering that name. Um, or Shirin. Okay, anyways. Um, D4, Knight of 6, Knight of 3, E6, and E3. So our Kali system, C5, Bishop D3, D5. And now it's important actually here, another memory marker is to prevent the move C4, which would shut down this bishop uh, having to retreat to bishop to E2. Um, and so we play the move B3 here, preventing C4. After Knight BD7, now Bishop D2. So Bishop B2. So it's not necessary to play A3 if black does not play knight d6. We see that there is no threat of knight b4, and so a3 would be would be just a waste of time. Um, b6, castles, bishop b7, and now white. Uh, yeah, white could first off finish development with knight d2, knight bd2, um, but what white played is also good, knight e5. Um, and after a6, knight d2. So white should typically try to finish development with knight d2 first before playing f4 because possibly we want to replace the knight on e5 with uh, bringing a knight to f3. Um, more often than not, we'll actually take with the f-pawn, but it's possible, uh, you know, to bring this knight to f3. Um, and after b5, now it's important actually because c4 is being threatened. And so black, uh, white has to play this move knight takes d7. After knight takes d7, um, okay, this one is quite possible, I think. Uh, playing the move like c4 here is very reasonable uh, now that the queen does not have an eye like it's not keeping an eye on this d5 pawn um, but instead queen takes d7 is played and now d takes c5 so this is important we don't allow c4 and we do allow the bishop uh, to develop with with one move but now we have this uh, another idea that you need to remember which is the move queen f3 now that the bishop's eyes are opened so some very nice bishops and so we improved just the queen possibly threatening to go to g3 Bishop e7, and now queen g3. And black decides to castle here. And so white just develops with knight f3, bringing the knight to a better square. Rook a c8, and now knight g5. And now again, uh, the threat is to take on f6 and to take on h7. And this is a very common idea uh, we see time and time again. g6, and now queen h4. And here there's a threat of again, bishop takes f6 by h7, with threat on h7, and so h5 is played. After rook a d1, Black plays this horrible blunder, knight h7, which if you're not looking at the right side of the screen, which you shouldn't right now, can you guess the move? Or can you find the move? Don't guess. So yeah, uh, the move is queen takes h5, just a brilliant, brilliant move. The point is that if they take on h5 with the pawn, then bishop takes h7 is a beautiful checkmate here with this beautiful pattern of two bishops. Um, and after bishop takes g5, uh, bishop takes g6 was played. And now uh, f6 was actually played in the game which um, does not save black at all. But if f takes g6 and after queen takes g7, then the queen is forced to block here um, and that would just be checkmate in one. And so f6 and then f4. And now, yeah, the bishop is just simply uh, a goner. After queen g7, fg5, knight g5, h4, kicking the knight, knight e4, white simply takes on, on e4 and plays rook f4 and black just resigns because there is no defense against this rook g4 threat. Um, queen h7 is maybe possible. Yeah, but then you will just simply trade and then and then play rook d7 with a fork on the bishop and the king. So, yeah, and this position already white resigned. So, a very nice game by Yusupov. The second game is by Alekhine. Uh, he, yeah, he played this game um, against his opponent, his opponent Stefano. Um, he played d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, bishop d3, c5 and now again b3 remember don't allow c4 with the tempo hitting your bishop c takes d4 a good decision e takes d4 um and bishop d6 castles castles bishop b2 knight c6 and now it's important again to prevent the move knight b4 so a3 um and we get this like this is very similar to a position i showed you in the introduction except the bishop is not out on g4 and so this becomes like, it's very reasonable to, to still go for this knight e5 plan. Um, because, yeah, we don't need to unpin something if the bishop, like, if the, for example, if the bishop was on g4. Uh, b6 was played. Knight bd2, bishop b7, queen e2, 
supporting the knight coming to e5, rook queen c7, and now knight e5. And now knight e7 was played, um, bringing the knight to the uh, to the king side, um, and f4, rook c8, rook c1, providing some support onto the c pawn, so that knight e4 here is not possible because if we take on everything, then perhaps the c2 pawn may be weak, and so rook c1 is just a nice move. Uh, prophylactically uh, defending this pawn on c2 g6 and now g4 so a really nice move trying to go for the attack h5 and now there's no need to take on h5 um, because the knight will just simply take back and keep a very solid position and even the knight may be possibly coming to f5 now and so we don't want to weaken a lot of squares h3 here and after king g7 now i place the move c4 so we don't want to play a move like king g2 because that would just land on the on this diagonal, and King H2 would just uh, yeah like expose yourself on the H file, and so C4 is a nice move, uh, trying to make use of this queen being on C7, and so Queen D8 tries to escape um, yeah tries to escape uh, the C file, and now C5 is a really nice move. The point being that if you take out C5 now, then this then this bishop's eyes open, and you don't care that you're sacrificing this pawn because G5 is next. Um, so bishop makes e5, now f takes e5, and after knight d7, b4, like what a beautiful position. White has all the space in the world, um, yeah, there's a threat on h5 right now, so uh, white takes, uh, black takes on g4, hg4, rook h8, trying to activate the rook, but it's a bit too late, like knight f3, knight g5 is a threat, so b takes c5, bc5, knight c6, covering the g5 square with the queen, but now queen e3, now supporting knight g5. And so queen e7 was played, and king g2, a very nice move, just def yeah, just defending against anything, against all of the threats on the h-file possibly. There are none, but it's it's good to make this kind of move. Um, f5, so if black just sits and do, does nothing, then, you know, the simple threat is maybe just to double up and just go for knight g5 uh, with too much pressure on f7. And so f5 was played to lash out, but this doesn't save a black at all. He takes f6, knight f6, and now queen g5. Now attacking H, uh, on g6, uh, and this kind of forces rook f6, rook h1 now, trading an important defender of black's king. And so rook, eight, rook c to h8, we trade, and then rook e1. So now I'm putting pressure on the e-file. So white is just like completely dominating this position from the beginning of the game. It's it's actually quite beautiful to see this in, in action. Um, knight d8, now knight e5. Now there's a lot of pressure on g6, and so knight g8 was chosen. Uh, trying to trade off the queens, uh, but now white switches gears and doesn't mind the queen trade on their own conditions, playing bishop c1, and now the threat is just to simply trade off the queens and then take the uh, take the exchange. And so, uh, and if you take on here, then on g5, then there's a double threat on the rook and the knight. Um, and so queen e8 was chosen trying to defend g6, but now rook f1 uh, trying to infiltrate uh, on the f file, bishop c6, and now rook f6. Um, it's a very nice move. Now you're just like overloading this knight, which is defending the rook. And so knight, knight takes f6, queen takes h6, king g8, and after bishop g5, um, black simply threw in the towel because there's too much pressure um, like everywhere. Every single thing is like hanging. If you move the knight away, then the simple like way to, way to play is just to take this. And then you're just taking the knight, like there's nothing. Um, so yeah, that's a beautiful game by Alakine. Uh, the next one is by Polgar against um, this Vietnamese player. <laughs> Excuse me uh, for not mentioning. Uh, I don't really don't want to butcher his name, but um, yeah. D4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, e3, e6, bishop d3, and now c5. So I think that c5 is definitely the most common move that you will face. b3, and then knight bd7. So again, like a lot of people don't like to just to bring the knight to c6, which doesn't make much sense because... It's by far the it's like its best place on c6. But the reasoning is that maybe black wants to play this move b6 and bishop b7 without covering the bishop's eye. But already know that if once black plays the move knight d7, knight bd7, they're already like slightly worse actually. Um, castles, bishop e7, bishop b2, castles, knight bd2, b6. And now seeing that all the pieces have been developed, you know, with this knight out on d2, bishop d3, bishop b2, white immediately strikes with knight e5. After bishop b7, and yeah, I think f4 is best here. But there's a very interesting, like, the antidote to f4 is actually playing this move knight e4. So this is another main problem of the Kali system. That this, if black manages to play knight e4, 
uh, and plays uh, like bishop b6, bishop b7, and knight e4. And like in this position, I think knight takes e4 is quite good. But in other positions, perhaps, um, yeah, this knight e4 move is really something that uh, is quite annoying to the Kali player because it blocks any potential, um, yeah, any potential attack because this knight is possibly going to be kicked with like f6 next. Um, so yeah, but so queen f3 was played here. Rook c8, rook ad1, useful move, queen c7, and now queen h3. And so another idea is just to um, maybe uh, like put some pressure on, on f7 here, uh, on h7 here. And so maybe there are some threats, f4, knight f3, you know, put some pressure there. Um, so h6, f4, just as planned, knight e4, and now blocking the diagonal. And now knight takes d7 was played trading the pieces but the point is that after queen takes d7 bishop takes e4 this kind of this forces d takes e4 um and now the queen is on the d file and so um yeah white can simply take on c5 the point being that if you take on c5 now knight takes e4 is a big problem because the queen is now hanging and so we can grab a pawn and trade off the bishops perhaps and so queen b5 was played but now knight c4 and now we have really nice squares to work with and this bishop is open on this long diagonal Bishop takes c5, queen g4, now threatening the g7 pawn, and also putting pressure on e6. And so this forces f6, and the queen takes e6 wins a pawn, a very nice pawn. King h8, rook d7 is very nice infiltration, rook c6, and after queen g4, uh, yeah, white, uh, black simply threw in the towel, uh, because they're just down a pawn with no compensation. And additionally, I think there's a threat of a4, um, with the queen just being like so misplaced. Like for example, rook g8 needs to cover the g7 square, and I think already move like a4 here is just crushing. Um, something like this. There might be a better move, but also the bishop is hanging. Like there's no, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing. So yeah, very nice, a very nice game here by Polgar. Um, and yeah, um, there's also this double bishop sacrifice um, that maybe I can just show like really quickly. I'll just show one game. You can look at the other two games. Um, Actually, yeah, uh, the other two games here um, in chapter 17 and chapter 19 next, if you want to look at this double bishop sacrifice in action. Um, but this chapter 17 is just the famous uh, bishop, double bishop sacrifice by Emmanuel Lasker, which is not in the Kali system, but it's very similar, actually. It's um, basically white still gets a pawn on f4, pawn on e3, uh, bishop on b2. So the ideas are very similar because the structure is uh, almost like the same, uh, except the pawn is not on d4. So yeah, um, d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, bishop d3, and now c5. Again, remember, we should always play b3 against c5 to not allow the c4 advance. And after bishop e7, bishop b2, knight bd7, knight bd2, b6, castles, bishop b7, and now queen e2. So again, you know, you can play knight e5, and, but queen e2 is also okay because you also could, you could also like place a queen on e2 where it normally is anyways or where it normally wants to be. But I think playing knight e5 here is better because as we saw in the previous game, you may want to keep options of like queen f3 possible, like still alive there. So anyways, queen e2, castles, knight e5, queen c7, and now uh, a3 was played, which I don't think is necessary. Um, but perhaps the idea is to prevent any, maybe any bishop e4, but that doesn't really make sense. So I'm not exactly sure why a3 was played, but a6, f4, and now b5. And so remember, we saw this very similar structure before. Black is threatening c4, and so what white should do is just take on d7. And now if queen takes d7, now d takes c5 again. It's, a, it's quite, a, quite a bit of a problem with the bishop takes f6, uh, gf6. And I think, I'm wondering if bishop takes h, h7 works. Yeah, I think this does. Queen h5, king g8, and then rook f3. Yeah, I think this works. Yeah, this is just winning completely. So... Um, yeah, that's the possibility after queen takes e7. If knight takes d7, which is the best move, now we need to take on c5. And the point is that we saw that this knight is just leaving the defense of the king side. And so after knight takes c5, bishop takes h7. First bishop sacrifice. King takes h7, queen h5. Bringing the queen closer, king g8, and now bishop takes g7. Threatening queen h8 checkmate. And so after king takes g7, it's important here uh, for white to play the move queen g4 first. And in this position, actually, what resigned, uh, black resigned. Um, but if you play the move rook f3, 
Now black has to move king rook g8, and now they're escaping with the king. And so it's important to play queen g4 first. Now this would be maiden 1, very simple. And if they play the king up to the h-file, then rook f3 with, with unstoppable mate here. So very beautiful game here by Filatov. So yeah, that concludes this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, you can check the uh, study below uh, and you can, you know, uh, if you have any students that you want to teach us a very simple system to, um, yeah, like it's it's highly, I highly recommend it. Um, the students that, I've ta that I have taught this to have been very like happy with the results. Um, yeah, especially this B3 and Bishop B2 idea uh, and just going for a quick attack. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.